It's a Theta video. Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I am going to take a look at Theta and Theta Fuel and try to figure out what is it doing. So at the moment, um, it's doing exactly, you know, as we thought it would be, which is a rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation. Now it's going sideways. That's typically how it goes. Now from here, um, there's a couple different things that could happen. Well, the big elephant in the room at the moment is the bull market support band sitting way down in here. There is a Bitcoin fractal um, that suggests that we do come down and tag it um, for Bitcoin, which basically suggests that, you know, it's kind of what we've been saying all along a we come up for b and now we're starting to work our way down for c unless you know we don't have to break the low we come down kind of go sideways into reaccumulation and allow the bull market support band to catch up so that we can have a proper test to continue higher because you can see we have not yet tested it i was like a, i was hoping we can test it here um but that never occurred so um you know we don't have to come down and test but statistically speaking that's kind of what you want to do um because at the end of the day it's all about the altcoins and it's all about having long-term sustainability and the best course of action for that is for bitcoin to come down and test the bull market support band so when you look at total three um you can kind of see a flat structure what we've been talking about which is an a we come up for b and now we're starting to work our way down for c maybe we come like this continue higher right and also that is a fractal um and I did put out a video yesterday that uh, blockchain backer actually added confluence to our original idea, which is A, B, C, or some type of reaccumulation in here. So, um, you know, when we came up and took out the top and we pulled back, I know a lot of people were buying the dip thinking we we're going to continue higher. Um, but simply the reason why it wasn't likely is number one, we already took out the top. Number two, it came up correctively. And number three, it it spent too much time down here. So it was acting more corrective than anything. So, um, you know, I would say April, I think most of the anticipation was it gonna be an up month, but January, February, and uh, March, right, was pretty much, um, well, definitely February and March, you can see all of February and all of March we were going up. So it would make sense that April would be a pullback month um, to set us up for, for the month of May. Um, so, you know, timing is, is very important because not only you want to correct through price, you want to correct through time. What does this have to do with theta? Well, taking all that into consideration, if in fact that is what's happening here, there's a couple different ways we can see theta um, finishing up this correction so first off we have an a we come up for B right and then we start working our way down like this so to me that would be an a B C right and the B wave is also uh, an ABC and looking for the C wave to have some type of five waves, right? Um, so we could actually flatten out here and allow it to catch up. But me personally, I'd rather just get it over with and just start working our way down. Maybe over the next, I would say, week and a half to two weeks. Um, it would probably, that's how long it would take to get down there. Um, I would say a week if we're lucky. So that's that idea, right? The other idea is to say that, no, it's gonna take more time. And what I mean by that is, so we have one, two, three, four, five, right? That's your A. And then we have a complex B, right? Which is, um, we have one, two, three, 
one, two, three, and now we're getting one, two, and we're gonna come up for three. Now, probably, you know, taking out this, this top here, all of this liquidity, you can see there's a perfect trend line here, resistance, right around that $3, $3.15. We come up, take out the top, grab that liquidity, then bring it down into five and then meet up with the bull market support man so you know we're, we're kind of at that crossroads there so you know we're but the good thing is more the the more time it has to mature the better are you know the better we are equipped to to, to handle the situation and to figure out um what it's exactly doing right because think back when we come back over here the correction was barely starting you know so we didn't really know how it's shaping up to be but now we have a definitive um wave structure here right so um so yeah those are the three ideas so once again um i'll show you real quick so obviously we come up take out the top come back down the other idea is to suggest that we don't take out the top, but rather this is an A, this is a B, and now we're starting to work our way down into um, reaccumulation where we meet up with the bull market support band. And then the other idea is similar, but instead of going down, we kind of just go like we, you know, the original idea, right, which is a rise, crash, retrace. You come down for reaccumulation, and then you kind of go sideways in a range for a while. And then it'll hopefully it allows time, you know, to for the bull market support band to catch up. I don't really like that. I don't like going sideways and then hitting the bull market support band. I I, I prefer it to actually come down and then wick off with a vengeance, right? And then maybe come back down, test it one more time, and continue higher, because that shows strength. If you kind of just meander into it. Um, sometimes they can fail, but to me, I think, I think if I had to choose which one it would be, it would be something like this, where we come up, then kind of drizzle down here, take out the low, and then continue higher. So something like that is my preferred. And then what you have ladies and gentlemen, is you have a one, two, three, four, five. Kind of a an awkward looking, you know, bull flag type of situation here, right? I wouldn't necessarily call it a diagonal, but, uh, you know, you have your one, two, three, four, five, and then you're just correcting, 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 boom, take off. So the date is April 11th, uh, at least for me here in California, um, man, it is already getting hot over here. I'm, I really like the cooler months, um, especially here in California. Summers here can get well over 100 degrees, and it's, it's pretty miserable, actually, uh, especially when you go out and turn your car on. You got to wait for like a five minutes for your car to get nice and cool and you're trying not to give yourself third degree burns when you put your seat belt on um but uh you know how it is so um yeah but to me summer months are just kind of uh boring price action that's why i'm hoping we can get this you know this final big push to the upside before we kind of you know go into our reaccumulation for summer or let me let me show you what i mean here so when i zoom out right that's kind of what it looks like so when you look at it zoomed out it looks like a tiny little correction right it looks like easy right so we have a one two and either this is uh three four five or better yet i'm really hoping that this is a one two and this is another one two which will set us up nicely for a third wave that I'm hoping gets us up here, right? So then that third wave would end somewhere in this box. So you could see all of this 
price data in here. So we'll just drag that along. And then what we would see typically is now we're, let's see, let's see where we are here. So that comes in about June, June or July maybe. So then what, what could be typical, right, is say, you know, we're almost in July. So then we kind of go sideways until about October, right? Maybe right about there. So, and that's kind of how I'm looking at it now. So then, right, we, contingent on this is a one, two, one, two, even if it isn't and we get a fifth wave, um, one, two, three, four, five, then you still want to see some type of ABC, something bigger than this, something bigger than this, right? That battles, the reason why it would take longer is because it's coming in at the end of the fifth and then also because you're in the middle of the retracement levels. So a lot of times, kind of like how Ethereum is, it's battling the 702, um, the total two, total three, it's, it's in the retracement levels. So here's total three and right now it's battling, it's in between the 50 and the 618. So let me put it right about there. Yeah, so it's in between the 50 and the 618 and that's typical. You, you, you get up here, right? Um, you have a one, two, one, two, just kind of like how Theta did, right? And now you push higher into that fifth, but now you're stalling out at these retracement levels. And typically that can take maybe through the summer, right? So um, this chart looks like it's a little bit of ahead of Theta. So um, whenever this correction finishes up hopefully by the end of April or so we get one more push to the upside for May and then this sort of consolidates battling the all-time high kind of like what Bitcoin is doing so you know Bitcoin is right um, it's sort of at that all-time high and it's battling it so Bitcoin's leading total three and then you would have theta and then XRP is dead last so um, I mean, that could be a good thing. That could be a bad thing. Um, but for me, percentage potential, you know, back when 2018, we know XRP was the last one to move. So hopefully that's the case now, but we'll see. Um, but what's really interesting as well, as I, I pointed out, is the, you know, the CEO of Ripple calling a five trillion, easily predictable, a five trillion dollar market cap. So I mean, he's got to know something we don't know. And that will be incredible for Theta um, because Theta is a leader, right? A lot of, for example, the reason why it's a leader is because if you look at your range down in here, Theta is well above its breakout range. When you, you know, like, for example, Chainlink is, Solana definitely is. Um, but you have a lot of coins that are kind of down in here, but you don't want to count them out. For example, like Theta Fuel, you don't want to count it out, right? Just because they're down there doesn't mean that they're not going to perform. Just being a leader sort of, you know, leads the, uh, the market, you know, kind of like to the promised land, right? So anyways, we get up here in this fifth wave, we consolidate probably all summer, right? Um, and then once we get out of the, now this is all theory based, right? Cause I don't like to go too many steps ahead. We're already at one, two steps ahead. So for me to go three steps ahead, now it's like, it, it, it's pushing it, but just for fun, we'll do it. Um, so what I would do is I would take this Fibonacci and I would actually, instead of putting it from this wick, I'm actually, to me, this wick was the correct, it corrected above the all-time high, so I'm actually going to put it right about there. And we'll come down. So, yeah, and that actually, when you look at total two, total three, it actually is right between the 618 and the 50, so that makes sense to me, right? So, uh, let's actually put it on regular. There we go. Now we can see a little more detail in here. Um, so, I mean, if I even push it up, I'll just put it right there. Um, but yeah, we see it, you know, battling 
you know, around the 50 and the 618. Um, so, you know, the way I have it drawn maybe even goes a little higher. Something in here through the summer. So then let me put a vertical line right. Let me actually take everything off. And I'm going to put a vertical line somewhere in October. So right there. So the idea would be, and now let me put this on log scale. And then what I'm going to do is say, okay, we have a one, two, one, two, or a one, two, three. We come down to the bull market support band. We finally push up um, to that fifth wave sometime in May and June, hopefully, right? Um, I mean, it could take, it could take, this thing could go sideways all summer. You know, it, I don't really believe so, but it could right and if it did that then it's only going to set up a bigger foundation for uh a more explosive move but i think we're going to get somewhere up in here um between this you know four dollar and seventy cent area up to even ten dollars right it's it's definitely um in the card so when we get up here we consolidate you know we build the base it doesn't look big right because we're on a bigger time frame but essentially something like this where we're now let me zoom it out a little bit um, we come in here we consolidate all summer it might be grueling heck we might even have a bullish summer I'm just saying typically summer months give us kind of boring lackluster low volatility low volume price action because the people who are, you know, moving the markets, the multi-billionaire millionaires, right? Um, summer is sort of, you know, it could be vacation, you know, people, kids are out of school. A lot of people are traveling. A lot of people, you know, like you're on vacation, right? So, um, but, you know, we do have these certain times in summers where we get these interesting pumps but they're more corrective so we get into october we're consolidating sideways right and then and then that would be our moment to start making a push for the all-time high so um i definitely believe it's in the cars that we can hit the all-time high sometime by the end of the year so then it would be either a one, two, three, four, five. We have an ABC and we continue pushing up one, two, and then we finally break out four, five. And then we're probably getting to be close to finish. Now, if this is a, or it could be a one, two, one, two, right? And then we get into the third, four, five, and then we flag out for four. And then we have five. One, two, three, four, five. So I don't know how high it's going to go right now. I want to see kind of how it starts to break out of the all-time high. But typically, right, I'll show you on the retracement. Um, I think $50 would be a, a reasonable uh, target, especially for Theta. Um but really the 4.236 comes in around $64. Now a conservative target to have would be $25 to $30. An intermediary target would be $40 to $50. And swinging for the fence might be $60, $64. But you know, Theta's not too big of a market cap. So it can totally exceed your expectations, right? Um, if I go to log scale and look at it, um, you know, the 1618 is at $120. Do I believe it can hit $120? I mean, probably not. I would say more if it's going to go past that $60, $64 mark, I would think more in terms of 85 to 95 because you have that $100 psychological round number um but you know who knows i i wouldn't bet on it but um 
it could definitely surprise us. Now, do I think it can go to $120 in the future? Of course. I think it can definitely hit $120, um, even up to $250 to $300 at some point um, in the future. Now, we need regulation. We need a utility-driven market. Um, you know, good things take time. Remember, we're at the beginning of the beginning, right? This thing is, to me, a very powerful wave one. And wave threes are usually pretty powerful. So it wouldn't surprise me to get up here to, to that $60 area, which is the 1.414 on log scale or thereabouts, right? So I don't necessarily always have it pinpoint on the exact high and the exact low. Just giving you a ballpark estimation. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. But for now, I'm looking for the price to kind of either flag out and hopefully hit the bull market support bin. But if it doesn't, it's okay as long as Bitcoin does, right? Bitcoin definitely needs to. So if Bitcoin, for example, hits its bull market support band, but data comes not so, you know, pretty kind of close, but not too much, then, you know, I would take it as still a win. But I really want to see the price have another pump break out of this correction before summer starts so you know we're still in spring um you know we got the rest of april may and i would say maybe even june um the old saying is sell in may and go away um i don't know how relevant that is this time around considering we're already correcting right usually if we were pumping into april then yeah i can see that but we've been correcting all of April. So that tells me we're probably going to have a pump coming in May or at the end of April. So that's kind of the hypothesis here if, if that's what we're doing. Now, another way it can happen is we have our pump, right? And then, you know, we have one, two, three, four, and then we go five. And we get up here, right? Maybe you know, like I said, between five and 10 bucks thereabout. And then we can go down a big correction into reaccumulation, right? Before going into a big breakout, right? So it'd be a rise, crash, retrace. We go down into reaccumulation. We flag out in here before breaking out. Now, I don't know how certain I am of that if, if Bitcoin starts to rip above the all-time high then altcoins move pretty quickly they don't really you know i mean once it really depends when bitcoin starts to end so for example if bitcoin a lot of people think maybe next year around uh i would say you know october of of 2025 somewhere around there or even, you know, spring of 2025. So let me put one line here. And then I'm going to put another line right about here. So somewhere in that zone, I've, I've seen some pretty compelling time targets for that area based off previous cycles and things like that. Um, so... You know, it's not going to be all upside. There's going to be long periods of consolidation. So to me, like going to Bitcoin, once Bitcoin breaks out of its all-time high, a lot of times the altcoins still don't really catch up as powerful. It's only when Bitcoin starts to really, like let's say it gets to 80, 90, 100K, and we start to consolidate in here, this is when the altcoins really explode. Just like if you go back over here, I've shown it before, you can see um, here's Bitcoin's bull run, right? We're going up, 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 right? And data's going sideways, basically. But once Bitcoin stopped, once the bull market was basically over, that's when theta really exploded above all time high and really got going here so if we 
take that into consideration, right? Let me go to regular here and remove that. Then what we can see, um, once Bitcoin, you know, starts to break out, right? Whatever that may be, because to me, it looks like we have one, two, three, and now we're some type of wave four, and then we get five. Now, it could be that we're in wave um, four of three, which means we have one more high in wave three, then we go into wave four, then wave five. So it, it, I'm kind of waiting to see how that plays out. Um, I'm not sure if this is a wave four or a wave um, one, two, all of this is three, four, five, now that's three, so one, two three then then we pull back into wave four then we go into wave five so regardless i think uh it, it doesn't really matter too much because the point what i'm trying to make is um once bitcoin you know completes five waves so one two three four five you know let's say it's 100k maybe even 200k i don't think it'll go that high i think you know, probably 90 to 125. Not sure yet. I really want to see how this this wave corrects. And I want to see, um, you know, we can pull some measurements later on. But regardless of where it stalls out, it'll probably, you know, either correct to the upside, kind of like how this one did, or go into some type of distribution, right? So if that's the case, you know, we pulled that and then we're kind of going sideways this is when theta is time to you know that's when it's glory really comes out right so following that line right we break out theta breaks out too but it only gets into its retracement levels and then it kind of lags behind as bitcoin still kind of marching up and then once bitcoin starts to go into distribution that's when it just goes insane right so that's kind of how I'm seeing it. And then once Bitcoin's over, then it's really quick for being over for Theta. So hopefully that kind of made some sense. So let me draw it here on the Theta chart. Um, let me do this. Let me actually put it on log. So, you know, Bitcoin's up here. We pull back. We have that final wave right to the upside and we go sideways so that would mean theta also pumps up right but then it gets stalled out here in the retracement levels once bitcoin gets going again it's kind of lackluster but pushing forward but then once it goes sideways that's really when theta starts to break out that's kind of how i'm seeing it right now this is all contingent on Bitcoin continuing higher, number one, and then also contingent on theta not necessarily going too much into reaccumulation. So rise, crash, retrace, and then we get deep into reaccumulation that could take another, you know, six months before going higher. Um, that's that's what happened with XRP. That's, you know, it's happened with Bitcoin before, like, for example, right here. What I'm saying is, what if theta is in some type of wave like this, right? Where, you know, it, then it comes back down. So basically, it was a rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation, and then it continued higher. So if I were to draw that on theta, then, you know, um, well, first of all, where did Bitcoin go? So you can kind of see, like, check this out right here. You can see the price coming up, right? And then it kind of created this descending triangle. So the price of theta actually got above right about, or sorry, the price of Bitcoin got right about here, right? So if I kind of overlap that with the price of theta, then you can see, right, the price of theta also had a descending triangle, right? 
So we pull back, we get all the way up, maybe we get up to, so that would be the equivalent of about $9.50, say $10. And then we flag out, right? We flag out like Bitcoin did. So that kind of looks the same. Now the difference is, look how big this base was. This base was huge, right? This base was approximately, um, you know, 650 days or so. And then Bitcoin's base, it was nothing. It was nothing. It was not even 200 days, right? So that's actually a good thing, right? Because then it means that you don't necessarily have to go all the way down into reaccumulation that much because it already did it down in here, right? So it built a proper foundation, a proper base so that it doesn't necessarily have to. Now, I still think it may, but not just as not as big. So just um, if this is the case, right? We have our ascending triangle, our descending triangle. We get up here, same thing like Bitcoin did, right? And then we kind of flag out, right? Maybe we hit back test uh, the breakout level or somewhere, right? So actually, let's do this. Let me put a retracement up. This is all this is all for fun, right? We're just a thought experiment here. Um, the 618 actually is this on log scale? Yeah. Okay, the 618. So about $4. So so that would be interesting, right? We come up here, 1 2 3 4 5. 1 2 3 4 5 and then we flag out and we come we get up to about you know, maybe $9, 9 to $10. This is based off the Bitcoin fractal, right? Um, and then we pull back into the 618 to about $4. So we pull back to about $4, right? We flag out, maybe dip the low, right? And then continue higher, something like that. Now, don't worry about the time because it the time is irrelevant the way I've drawn it. It could be faster, it could be longer. But just to show you for Bitcoin now, doesn't that look similar? Right? We come up here, we have this descending triangle. We build a base, not a, a small one. We come all the way up, we test it about right there, then we flag out in here. Right? And then we, we're off to the races. So looking at theta kind of similar right except theta looks way way better because of the base is much bigger so i don't know this just an interesting thought experiment i've never really shared that idea um but yeah i i think uh some you know once we get up here into the retracement levels we start to flag out a bit consolidate reaccumulation and then make an attempt for the all-time high now i'm not i'm pretty sure we'll probably get stalled out here as well but depending how fast bitcoin moves or depending if it's in its distribution we can really get going pretty quick so that's all i got for you on theta um so you know real quick again on the smaller time frame uh we did have this appears to be a descending triangle but if you look we actually broke above it you know, we broke above the triangle, right? So not too confident, you know, based off this pattern that we're gonna break down because it looks like we broke out. But uh, let's see if I put it right about there, we actually broke out and back tested. So we'll see, maybe, maybe we get reaccumulation now, right? We go sideways. So rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation, sideways. I would like us to come down, but look, the Bitcoin or the bull market support bands down all the way at $1.83 to $1.63. And it's continuing to rise, right? But it's kind of starting to flat out a bit. So, you know, something like that. So if we come down here and then swoop the low, we wick it real quick. I, I would like to see something like that. You know, that would be good confirmation that buyers and bulls are in support or in control, I mean. Okay, so now Theta Fuel, 
Um, by the way, if you if you like if you made it this far in the video, hit that like button and uh, drop a comment. Let me know what you think. Um, very appreciative if you can do that for the channel. Uh, I think Theta Fuel definitely looks a bit more interesting. Um, you know, it's like, well, what the heck is that? It's kind of a wonky looking thing. But if you if you really know how to read it, like, I would suspect most people out there have their opinions of, you know, support, resistance, right? Here's your support or your resistance. Here's your support, right? And they're basically saying it's ranging. And it looks, you know, different than a lot of other charts. But if you know how to read it, you can kind of, you know, kind of decipher what it's doing. But before we do that, let's zoom out and talk about the higher time frames here. So the weekly chart is going to end in three days. If the weekly candle ends where, it at, it, where, where it's at right now, right, that will be the highest weekly close since all the way back in april of la of 2022 so two years ago right and i wouldn't even count that because that's a that's a crash candle i would actually say um you know somewhere over here which would be march about the same right we'll say march april of 2022 so two years ago so which is this weekly candle you can see we want to close above this line here. So put it right about there. We want to close above this green candle here. Uh, that's all that's all we want for theta or theta fuel. So um, that's not too much to ask. So if we zoom in, where is that at on the smaller time frame? Well, that's look at that. We we broke uh, we had a one, two, it looks like a one, two, one, two, a one, two, right? It looks very bullish, actually. Um, we broke above that black line, basically this order block, right? And then we back tested it and we, we found ourselves with some resistance. And the only reason why is because the whole market kind of isn't ready yet. It's, you know, like I said, with Bitcoin, I said with total three it looks like it needs to come on down to the bull market support band but theta's theta fuels like let's go let's go i'm ready right but to me when that happens usually um when an when an asset really wants to go uh, a couple of things can happen number one basically we just go sideways so as bitcoin's coming down right to the bull market support band we can see theta fuel maybe having a correction like we come up we come down right and then it starts to gear up and go something like that right so that's one way you can look at it another way you can look at it something we've been talking about for a while which is an a and then we come all the way up for a b this is a massive flat right and then we come all the way down for a running flat so boom, 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 running flat. We, it was a hard stop. And then following that running flat, we have a one, two, one, two, one, two. And now we're kind of stalling out a little bit. Maybe we get a three-way pullback, you know, trend a little sideways before, you know, really kicking it into high mm -hmm. gear. Now, that's that would be the bullish way to look at it. I'm not too sure about that, only because, like I said, Bitcoin total market cap looks like it needs to come down so if that's the case then either we can it's still a flat right it's still a very bullish flat the difference is you know we have like a rise crash we go into retracement we come down into reaccumulation now we're kind of just ranging in here before bitcoin is ready to go that's one way you can look at it um the other way is to say, well, the flat's not finished, right? We have an A, we come up for B, and then this is an A, B, and then we come down for C, and then we go, right? So, you know, even maybe like a WXY where we have one, two, three, 
one, two, three, one, two, three. So W, X, Y, right? And then bam, go. To me, it really doesn't matter how it does it. The point is a lot of the, all the structures and all the patterns are pointing up, right? We are bullishly consolidating. So I definitely keep an eye on Theta Fuel. It's looking very interesting, much more than Theta is at the moment. But remember, Theta uh, itself is much, much higher than Theta Fuel, right? So if I put on, uh, let's zoom out here and check this out. And now I'm going to put um, uh, Theta Fuel and Theta side by side. So you can see Theta Fuel's way down here and theta is way up here. So when I zoom out, um, you know, when I zoom all the way out, actually let me, I'm gonna put theta and I'm gonna put same percentage scale. Okay, so when you look at it from the same percentage scale, this is side by side, right? You can see theta is way up here, right? And then as you zoom in, it starts to change depending on you know the last high but when you zoom all the way out like I said it's I mean we're significantly higher than theta fuel down here so to me you know there's more percentage potential in theta fuel but also you want to you know for me I like to be diversified obviously but um, if I had you know a hundred dollars to spend I would probably put not financial advice, but I would probably put it into Theta Fuel. And maybe if I had 100 bucks, maybe 80, 85 in Theta Fuel, and then the rest in Theta at the moment. Now that can change very quickly. Um, for example, if Theta Fuel decides to, you know, catch up at least, you know, 100% of the wave or even 80%, then obviously, you know, you want to rotate around, but um, that could be maybe a topic for another video. But what I really wanted to show is, you know, we're definitely higher than Theta Fuel. So when I zoom in, um, I'm just going to zoom in to this capitulation low right there. Okay. So you can see the range in here, right? Um, so one coin is well above its range. The other coin is sort of back testing its range, right? So, you know, we get the idea it's, it's, it's getting ready. And, and what the most compelling thing I've ever seen, right, is, I mean, look at, let me actually switch it back to log. Look how nice this looks. Right, we had a one, two, one, two. We have a maybe even another one, two, or we're in the middle of the third. But look at this we broke above the range here. Right, we broke above this resistance. This is a massive range, and we broke above it. And then look what look what happened. We came down, right? We came down and we back tested it. And we came up again, we back tested it again. We are holding support. And now look at this current candle here, right? Now we had an, a massive, uh, of actually a four day candle to the upside. And now we have this doji here. Let's look at it from, uh, let's look at the two day candle. Yeah, okay, let's look at it. For me, the most important, right, is the weekly candle. And then obviously, let's check our monthly candle. Yeah, our monthly candle looks very bullish. Look at that. We have a bullish hammer candle. You can see, I mean, I didn't even, I haven't looked at the monthly chart for Theta Fuel, and I'm looking at it thinking, wow, this thing broke to the upside, right? It broke to the upside. This candle came all the way back. Remember, I, I talked about uh, a lot of times. When you have a big monthly breakout, the following candle likes to wick or likes to come all the way down and retest 50% of the breakout candle. And that's exactly what it did. It went even a little lower. It back tested it. And then bam, now it's trading above the previous candle. So that's what we want. We want this candle to be trading above this candle. And that's what it did. But even better, 
this candle wicked off support. You can see that big tail, right? So that's a bullish sort of hammer candle off the range, off the breakout. And then what's even more interesting is this guy right here. And we are at phase D, right? We are at that final area before blast off, really. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we, the example here, we broke out, right? And we're basically just consolidating back testing the top of these rain the top of the range right so we have our two points and that's exactly what we're doing so we have three up three up we came back down took out the low came back down took out the low came back up without taking out the high came back up right when then we kind of swoop down right we made this u shape and then bam we break out bam we break out and then what comes next after it's complete a big breakout and that's what i'm waiting for so for me i'm hodling theta fuel 100 percent um not financial advice but i'm thinking this thing's gonna rip to the upside the only thing i don't know is let me take everything off the screen so we got the wyckoff perspective right we broke out of a major range the only thing i'm not sure about like i said is with that um with the Bitcoin correction coming down to the bull market support band and also total total uh, three, right? So, you know, so far we have an A, we have a B, right? If this comes back down for C, that could totally happen. But if it did, that would actually be the best thing for Theta Fuel, right? It would suck in the beginning, but it would be very interesting because that would make it so a one, two, one, two. And we kind of back test this wick here, right? Maybe even a little higher. And then bam, we're off to the races. But the way it's looking now, it, it kind of doesn't look so corrective. Obviously, that wick is there, but this looks like it's, you know, impulsing. That's what it looks like to me. So I'm actually hoping that we come back down, you know, and we can buy the dip, right? And that would make, I, I would actually hope for it to come back down, at least go sideways in here and reaccumulation, maybe nine cents to eight cents. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm DCAing. And then if we break that low around seven, six or seven cents, you, I'm definitely buying that dip. Um, so yeah, data fuels looking really bullish. Um, and just, you know, not financial advice. I can't give advice, but don't chase these crazy. A lot of things popping off in the last couple months. Just remember to stay grounded. Know what you hold. Stay the course. Follow the plan. Have a strategy. And when you see people tweeting or talking about this coin whatever coin that's gone up so much and they make so much money just stay away from that um, because you don't want to buy anything that people are talking about you want to buy something that nobody's talking about right something that's boring right something that people are becoming complacent with right i mean if you just look at xlm for example I mean, it, it didn't even go on a bull run. I mean, it's just, it's done nothing, right? It's going sideways. And these are the kind of assets I like because these are the creepers, right? They creep up on you before doing something very interesting. So um, like Solana's up here, you know, a lot of coins are already way up here in the retracement levels. I'm looking for them to be more lower right that's why with theta i'm not really accumulating unless of course theta if, if the the only way i would buy theta and this has got to be different for everybody doesn't you know the only way I, for me i would buy theta um let me zoom in to the four hour is if I have a real clear setup, but more importantly, if we test the bull market support, if we come down here somehow, some way, I'd probably, I would, uh, I would end up buying that, right? We break that liquidity, break this support, 
Everybody panics, everybody sells, boom. Um, that's kind of how I'm looking at it. But for now, it's sort of in a range. It can go either way. Chances are it's probably going to, you know, sideways with a downish tilt, I guess you can say. Because um, when I look at Bitcoin and I look at total three, you know, like look at this fractal here. Right, this fractal, I screenshotted it from Blockchain Backers channel, but basically, right, uh, and we talked about this too, um, with with this with this flat here. We came, this is the fractal from Bitcoin back in the day where we had a, a top, we came down, we broke the top, but it came up correctively, and then we started to come down into a flat. Um, so the flat didn't come directly down like you would think. The flat actually kind of bounced around, then it swooped the lows, then it took off, right? So if that were to happen with what we see now, we can see something like that, right? Which means if we translate that to theta, you could see um, total three on the bottom and then theta on the top, right? Which is the darker one there, um, you know, something where we come back down, right? Where we kind of meander down, take out the low, and then swoop it, right? Sweep the lows and take off. That's kind of how I'm looking at it. If not, we go sideways. So if we do break out, then that would be interesting because I can't really see Bitcoin breaking out quite yet. I mean, if it did, great, but that would kind of suck because you really want it, like I said, to test the bull market support band. So um, here's Bitcoin and Theta side by side. You can see, you know, a little bit of divergence. Here's Theta going down, Bitcoin's going up. So a lot of times they'll start to converge again. Where Bitcoin goes down, Theta starts to retain its value. Okay, and that'll do it for this. No, wait. Theta versus Bitcoin, check it out. Theta versus Bitcoin, I haven't talked about this in a while. Um, I'm probably going to do a separate video on this, but I'm telling you right now, I'm really liking what I'm seeing here with Theta versus Bitcoin. Uh, I haven't done this um, in a while, but uh, essentially, um, you know, we have this five wave move down. We have a breakout. I mean, we could come down and backtest uh, the bull market support band, or at least, you know, backtest uh, this this range in here. So somewhere out there, but I would actually think, right? Pull this up here. Yeah, the 618 is actually right at the bull market support band. So 4033. Uh, or I should say 000033. Um, Satoshis, right? It's valued in Satoshis. So yeah, we had a nice impulse. But so far, it's only three, right? We have one, two, three. I want to see four and five and then a three-way pullback, and then a, a continuation higher. So really looking for this thing to continue higher. It might stall out a little bit, but we'll talk about that on the next Theta video. I'll get into more of Theta BTC, but yeah, I, I do like um, the way this is shaping. All right, guys, that'll do it for this video. If you can, that would be amazing if you can hit that like button and click subscribe if you haven't already um, and get all the latest data analysis. Um, so, you know, I'm looking at it every day. Uh, if I see something, I'll, I'll definitely check in. But um, yeah, other than that, if you want to support the channel, you can do so um, through the YouTube tip jar or even the super thanks helps out. Um, but yeah, if you have any coins you want me to take a look at for the next rapid fire, you can go ahead and drop them below and I'll add them to the list and we can uh, check it out sometime this week. So um, yeah, I will catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.